Hey there CNCers, Scott here from CNC Labs. I'm here today to talk about something we are super excited about around the lab. The AutoZero TouchPlate. You might be wondering what the big deal is about this little piece of metal, so I hauled in the man behind the genius, Chris, to tell us more about the new design. Let's check it out. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell to get all the latest and greatest content from CNC Labs. Hey everyone, Chris here, and today I'm really excited to be talking about the AutoZero TouchPlate. Um, it's a brand new touch plate that we've designed and it's got a lot of very interesting features. So I'm just gonna open this up and show them to you while I explain why we've gone and made this new design. So if you've used our existing three axis touch plate before, I'm sure you're very familiar with how it works. You're basically able to stick the block onto a piece of material and use it in order to touch off in any three directions. And what's great about that is even though you can, you know, place things by eye if you'd like to. Um, it allows you to really accurately position the bit to the corner of the material. So if you're trying to do something that's really constrained uh, or if you're trying to do something repeatable, um, then it's available for you. Um, now, although there's never been any uh, drastic downsides to using uh, our touch plate or any of the other touch plates on the market, you can't use them on nope. certain no, types of no, bits. No. So if you're setting up for, let's say, a V-carve, and because of that, you're wanting to just, you know, stick a V-bit on your machine and zero it out and start carving, um, none of the touch plates on the market, ours included, um, are able to work with that functionality. You basically would have to stick a quarter inch bit or an eighth inch bit or, you know, something else in there first, zero it out, and then swap it out, and then re-zero the Z on that, and then run it. And so we were thinking to ourselves, well, is there any way we could kind of resolve this issue? And so this is the, the new design that we've come up with. Uh, it took us probably about a year and a half of working at this because we were really trying to find the right balance of trying to make something that's not too complicated to manufacture or to use, um, it doesn't have too many drawbacks from the current touch plate that we would feel bad about releasing it. Um, and so, you know, this is what we've now come up with. So um, I'll explain to you uh, what it can now do and also how it's able to do that. So uh, as I mentioned, the existing touch plate only worked with straight end mills. And that's because whenever you're touching off in the X or the Y, it was touching a flat surface. And so if you're touching off that flat surface and you got a V-bit, then now, depending on the height you're at, you'll touch it at different points, right? Or a ball nose bit as well. Uh, if it's tapered, then you'll be touching it at different points. And so, you know, how are you supposed to get around that? Well, essentially this new touch plate, it's got some ang angled surfaces on the inside and that enables it to touch off um, in a way that nearly contacts the tip of the bit and in that way it's able to actually sense close enough to the center um, that it can zero it out. Um, this geometry probably looks really weird to you but the reason why it looks like this is it also allows you to do and this is why I call it the auto zero touch plate not, not only does it do auto zeroing but it gives you the ability to not even have to specify the diameter of the bit that you're using and that's because it's going to touch off um, two surfaces and because it knows the distance between those surfaces it can basically cancel out the diameter of your bit and know where the zero is no matter what the diameter is. Um, one of the last features that I really like about the new plate is it's got this groove cut out into the front left side and what that enables it to do is once you're done probing around um, the bit is able to move out to the outside corner and rest there as the probing cycle is now complete. And that's a great visual indicator to say to you, hey, 
your probing is done, you can remove the touch plate easily. Um, you can also notice that the probing thickness is very thin uh, rather than a really, really thick block. And that allows you to basically probe much taller materials uh, without losing additional z-axis travel. Um, and the only other thing I might add is that the Z uh, zero wing platform, the square here is quite small. And so for something like a surfacing bit, you'd think, oh, well, that wouldn't work. But we've actually got an extra piece of geometry on the back side here. And that allows you to touch off for the larger bits. Or if you're just doing a regular Z zero off the top of the material. Um, worst case scenario, you can also do a Z zero off the block itself as a whole. Um, other than that, uh, we've tried to make it so that the geometry, you're always starting in that center square, no matter what type of probing you do. And so you don't have to think about it. You just put it there, you put your bit, whatever it is there, and you can start your probing cycle. Um, as well as we've got the diagram here to show that you can also do your Z at the back as well. And we've also uh, coated the plate this time around so that it's uh, even more reliably conductive. And we have a new uh, wiring harness made up that'll give you more reliable connections through the magnet and the banana plug. And just as before, that can plug into either the side or the back holes. And then uh, you can just wire it up to your longboard controller uh, as is done on the previous version. So before we even think about messing with our shiny new toy, we need to open G Sender first and change some of the settings. So if you go up to that little cog in the top right corner and click on it, you will see that there is a settings and a probe submenu. On there, yours will probably say standard block because that's what we've been using till now. Hit that drop down, auto zero touch plate. There she is. That's all we have to do for settings. X out. And now you notice way over here in your probe menu that you have two new options. Auto, which is for straight shank bits, and tip, which is for round or angled bits. Now that we have our settings updated in G Sender, it's time to show you what this new touch plate can do. So we're gonna make sure that we are connected. We are going to make sure down here where the probe is that we have our X, Y, or Z axis chosen. In our case, I'm choosing X, Y, and Z. We are going to select our tool, which in this case, because I'm using an angled bit or a round bit, is tip. If you're using a straight shank, it would be auto. And if you notice, I already have my router set up over the square like Chris was talking about earlier. You hit probe. And as usual, it's going to ask you for connectivity. Make sure it goes back on there. And you hit start probe. The rest is history. But Scott, what if I only need to zero my Z-axis? We've got you covered. Flip over the Auto Zero touch plate and you'll find the Z Zero Axis tab. Go to your probe menu, select Z-axis, hit probe, get continuity like we always do, hit start probe, and you're done. So there you have it. The Auto Zero touch plate really can do it all. From end mills to V-bits and everything in between. This thing takes the guesswork out of zeroing your work from now on. For more information on the Auto Zero touch plate or to order yours today, check out the link in the description below. And you want to see more cool content, check out our website or our YouTube and make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you around the CNC.